Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I'm excited to be participating in Alex Siberia Designs August release. And as usual, it is fabulous. My cards today feature special delivery stamp set accompanied by the postage stamp stencil and cover die. For each card, I started off by die cutting white cardstock with the postage stamp cover die. The postage stamp panel is made up of four stamps. Around each of these stamps are some really tiny small dot details delineating each of the rectangles. The openings on the coordinating stencil are lined up with these dots. I use a little bit of post-it note tape to hold it in place on the back. The ink blending for both cards will be done with Distress Oxide inks. For this first card, I'm using a combination of spun sugar, dried marigold, and then finishing up with abandoned coral. When I change colors, I'll go back and pick up the last color and just blend it out before proceeding. The spun sugar and dried marigold have been blended together, so now I can go ahead and finish up with my last ink, which is the abandoned coral. This final color is quite saturated. I want it soft, so I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm going back and forth, applying the ink several times, evening the tone before I go back to the dried marigold and blend the two out. And then I finish up with just a few little touch-ups here and there, trying to get things somewhat even and consistent across all four stamps. Special delivery stamp set is super cute. It is made up of sentiments, lots of small images, and also some postage markings. And between the two cards, I've used just about everything. For this panel, along with one sentiment, I've chosen all of the images that are silhouettes. They're being inked up with Distress Oxide Faded Jeans. The ink was applied and stamped two times. For the second panel, the ink has been applied on a diagonal, starting with Kitsch Flamingo, Selfage Patina, and then finishing up with Faded Jeans. And like the previous panel, I'll go back and forth a couple of times, reapplying the inks, overlapping them so that they blend together. As I said before, there are several images included in the special delivery stamp set. I used the silhouettes on the previous card. For this one, I'm going to be using some floral outlines. For this panel, I'll be stamping the images one at a time. This first stamp I'm going to be using twice. This is a corner fitting stamp, so I'm spending some time getting it lined up to that ink blended corner. All of the images on this panel are going to be stamped with black VersaFine ink. This is my favorite ink to use with stamps that are outline images and sentiments. The impressions with this ink are always crisp. The second stamp will consist of a rose with a tiny sentiment and I'm tilting my misty up so that I can make sure that the sentiment is lined up on the grid. There is nothing worse than a sentiment that isn't straight. Well, okay, that might be a bit of an exaggeration. I want the images to be really black, so I am stamping them twice. I'll go back to that previous stamp, which by the way, has been cleaned. You don't wanna get any black ink on there from the previous stamping. And I have flipped it around to the top corner. And again, I'm just checking to make sure that that corner is going to line up with the ink blended corner. I'll go ahead and stamp that image twice. And then I'm going to add in a small sentiment, happy mail, right in the corner of that stamp. Again, I'm making sure that my stamp is aligned to the grid before I go ahead and ink it up. For the last stamp, I'll have a sentiment, plus I'm going to use the flower from the rose. And I've put some post-it note tape right along the edge of the ink blended panel at the bottom because the rose is going to run off and I don't want to get ink on the stamp edge. 
For simple masking, post-it note tape is the product that I reach for most often. And again, I'm making sure everything is aligned before I ink it up and stamp it. This stamp set is so cute and has all kinds of possibilities. I just love it. The panels are being adhered to A2 size black card bases. I chose to use a black card base rather than a panel because I don't want to add too many layers to this card. But in my mind, the black background was a necessity. It really makes those panels pop. And then I noted that I had a little heart stamp sitting right beside this panel that I was just putting together. And so, yep, I had to stamp it. I really wanted to use the postage markings included in this stamp set, but I didn't want to stamp them over top of the images. So I'm going to be using a decorative element, a vellum card envelope. I'll place the card inside the envelope and then into the MISTI so that I can get the postage note stamps lined up. After the stamps have been picked up on the door, I'm going to remove the card from the envelope. Ink can take a while to dry on vellum paper and I don't want to risk smudging it, so I'm going to be clear embossing it. I'll continue using the VersaFine ink. Typically, the ink will be a little bit lighter on vellum than on regular cardstock, so I will stamp it a couple of times. And that helps to darken it fairly well. And I'll go ahead and coat it with clear embossing powder. My heat tool was turned on when I started the stamping so that it would be at full temperature. And before I go ahead and melt that embossing powder, I'm going to stamp my second envelope for the other card. The VersaFine ink is a slower drying ink, and particularly so on the vellum paper, so there's no rush to melt that embossing powder. And like the first envelope, the images are stamped two times to darken that ink, and then this one is also coated with the clear embossing powder. So my heat tool is good and hot, and that's going to give me a nice, quick melt. And of course, I have to add a little bit of sparkle to these cards, so I'll be adding in some self-adhesive embellishments. For this card, the crystals are rose-colored. For the other one, they're smoky color, perfect for those silhouette images. I find it easiest to manage these self-adhesive embellishments with my craft pick, especially for those tiny ones. I simply take the pick and position it so that it is at the base of the crystal and then kind of slip it underneath until it catches the adhesive and then it can be positioned on the card easily. And then the cards are slipped into the decorative envelopes. If I was going to hand deliver these cards, no problem. But if I was going to pop them in the mail, I probably would put them in a five by seven envelope. And now for the finishing touch. A larger adhesive crystal is added to each of the hearts on the envelopes. And that wraps up these fun cards featuring some new products in Alex Siberia Design's August release. I love the special delivery stamp set and it really is taken to the next level when it's used with the postage stamp stencil and cover die. I'll have a link below to Alex Siberia Designs store so that you can check out the rest of the fabulous release. These sweet cards are quick and easy to make. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I appreciate your visit.